Um, so in this video today, I'm just going to discuss overpopulation, um, climate change and diet. So we have people in the world telling us that the world is overpopulated, but according to who? Didn't God tell Adam and Eve to go into the world and multiply thy seed? When you do a search for the word multiply through a website like BibleGateway.com, here are some examples of scriptures that include the word multiply. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So that's Genesis 1, verses 21 to 23. So that's God telling the animals and the fishes to multiply. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So that's... Um, Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So that's Genesis 1, verses 27 to 29. Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee, Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. So that's Genesis 6 verses 16 to 18. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. So meat means food. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. So that's Genesis 9 verses 1 to 3. Um, so these are some descriptions. Um, God, God tells um, you know, the animals to multiply and he also tells um, the humans to multiply. You know, multiply. Um, so overpopulation in, in this world is not the problem. It's the greed of man that is the problem. There are some very rich people who have a power complex. We could call them narcissists. Perhaps they cannot see this sin inside of themselves. But the devil or Satan is using them to achieve his own goal to kill people. Here are some descriptions of Satan or the devil in the word of God. Ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's John 8, 44. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's First Peter 5, verse 8. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. 
So that's 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 to 15. Um, and I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, um, eternal life, he means, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So that's John 10 verses 9 to 11. So the goal of the Green New Deal, uh, which you'll hear more about in the news, um, it's to do with the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, Agenda 21, Sustainable Development 2030 by the United Nations, um, Rockefeller Foundation. Um, the goal of the Green New Deal, as they try to save the planet, is to get carbon down to zero. And they need a lot less people than there are in this world to achieve this. May God thwart their evil depopulation plans and expose them. Bill Gates has spoken about has spoken about this in a TED Talks video entitled Innovating to Zero. He spoke of using vaccinations as a means to reduce the population by 10 to 15 percent. This video was published in 2011. Bill Gates has also become the largest owner of farmland in the world. And since he is pushing zero carbon, this will ensure that he wants people to become meat free and eat a lively vegetable diet. And this could also include um, genetically modified meats. So I'm going to tell you what God's word says about food um, and meat. Meat. Um, when, it, when it says meat in the Bible, it just means food. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days, sorry, the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So that's First Timothy 4 verses 1 to 5. So I'm going to read this article from a website called Days of Noah. It's D-A-Y-Z of Noah.com, which is going to sh change the shape of diets uh, in the coming months, years, which again is all being done to quote unquote save the planet. It's entitled Nor Launches the Good Food Lab, an engine room driven by insights and founded in academic rigor. So I'm just going to go to the article now. So this was written on the 30th of November 2020. Unilever's NAR brand is teaming up with Wageningen University to launch the Good Food Lab. The Good Food Lab is an opportunity to build an engine room driven by insights and founded in academic rigor, April Redmond, NAR Vice President, tells Food Navigator. NAR, the stock to soup brand owned by Unilever, is investing in a research program that will work with students at Wageningen University in the Netherlands the aim to shift the masses, quote unquote, on a path to better eating for people in the land, quote unquote. Through the on-campus collaboration, NAR wants to understand current consumption behaviour and explore new product ideas. NAR will work alongside nutrition and sustainability experts. Sustainability, keyword of the United Nations 2030 agenda. Um, 
sorry. Uh, back onto the article. Uh, NAR will work along the, alongside nutrition and sustainability experts as well as students at Wad, Wadjeningen University, which has just been voted the best university in the Netherlands for the 16th year in a row. Learnings will be open source to the wider food community and initial findings will be published next year. NAR Vice President April Redmond said the project will quote, help shape the brand, or close quote, into, quote, what it needs to be, close quotes, for the next generation. The remit is broad from, quote, products, close quote, and, quote, purpose in action, close quote, to how NAR communicates and where it has, quote, real impact, close quotes. Quote, we're on a mission to help people eat in a way that is better for them and the planet. For this, it is crucial to engage with younger consumers and have the power to make healthier and more sustainable food choices. We will work with these students to understand what, quote, good food, quote, can mean for us all, the barriers to sourcing, preparing and eating it and ways to overcome them. These students will help us to create products that appeal to the next generation, that are sustainable and delicious, that do not take from the land but nourish us all. Together we will help create the change we need to see, be, see and be, close quotes, Redmond revealed. Sounds like something Gandhi said, doesn't it? Innovation for the next generation. The Good Food Lab is a... Uh, open quote, test and learn environment, close quotes, assembling a young cohort of 18 to 24 year olds who already self-identified as interested in the future of food and food production, quote, but while food is their passion, they are also much like any other person when it comes to food choices, close quotes, Redmond told us, open quotes, we will be working with them to better understand how to make eating in a way that is better for people and planet easier and more appealing, close quotes. Redmond said she, open quote, absolutely, close quotes, expects this to unlock new ways of thinking about the NAR brand and innovation processes. She suggested that by working with the next generation of consumers, sorry, that was in, um, quote, next generation of consumers, close quotes, the company will gain Open quote, critical insights, close quotes. Quote, NAR recognises the importance of leaning into the next generation to both learn from and support them to eat for good, close quote. She elaborated, this is why CNAR is launching the Good Food Lab, designed specifically to understand how food brands such as CNAR can work with the next generation to equip and inspire them and ultimately the masses to adopt a way of eating that is nutritious and sustainable. Close quotes. So what does the next generation think about food? It's early days for the Good Food Lab, but Redmond already has some insight to share. Quote, based on baseline quantitative research that Knorr has undertaken with students at Wageningen University, there is strong evidence showing that the younger generation is very open to changing their attitudes and behaviours toward good food, food that is better for people and planet, close quotes. Looking at the attitudes of students aged 18 to 24, researchers found diet is one of the areas this cohort say they are, quote, most willing, close quotes, to change quote, for the benefit of the planet, close quotes. 95% of young people surveyed said they believe changing their diet is an, open quote, effective way to combat climate change. Ooh. This compares to 64%, sorry, effective way was the quotes, to combat climate change. This compares to 64% who expressed a willingness to cut their air travel. 90% said they are willing to eat less meat and 22% of participants reported they have already adopted a meat-free diet. Of those who still eat meat, 72% said they 
open quote, felt positive, close quotes, about choosing a plant-based diet. Future 50 Foods and Canar plant-based push. According to the FAO, uh, frequently answered, sorry, I don't know what FAO is. According to the FAO, 75% of the global food supply comes from just 12 crops and five animal species, yet there are more than 20,000 known edible plant species worldwide. Open quote, this excludes many valuable sources of nutrition and provides a limited amount and variety of important vitamins and minerals, close quotes, Redmond noted. Open quote, our nutritional health would greatly benefit from a more diverse diet as one of the major problems we face is our global reliance on such a small range of foods. What is more, a more diverse diet will also act as protection for our planet. Dietary monotony and monoculture farming, the process of repeatedly harvesting the same crops, is linked to a decline in the diversity of plants and animals in and around agriculture, which further threatens the resilience of the food system. Close quotes. Working alongside WWF, Knorr has developed the Future 50 Foods Report. Open quotes, the aim of Future 50 Food Report is to get people thinking about the impact of the food they eat on the health of themselves and their environment. It is a tangible solution to help lower the negative impact food has on the environment Excuse me, and increase the positive impact it can have on our health. The collective ambition is to get people eating a more diverse range of plant-based foods with a significant drop in the reliance on animal-based sources of protein. Close quotes, NARS, Vice President explained. Open quotes, the Future 50 report, the Future 50 Foods report identifies 50 of the foods that offer the greatest potential to not only increase the nutritional value, but also decrease the environmental impact of our everyday meals. We should all eat more of them to improve our health and the health of the environment. And though NAR's expertise in f and through NAR's expertise in flavour, we can help to make these plants tasty and delicious. For example, with our veggie stocks, it's easy to jam pack taste into veggie dishes, close quotes. NAR aims to increase the number of its products with Future 50 Foods by 25% and have 50% of the product portfolio plant-based both by 2025. This ambition is in line with Unilever's broader target to grow annual plant-based sales to 1 billion euros as part of its work to shift its portfolio to products that deliver positive nutrition. Redmond stressed that the need to increase the plant-based component of our diet is pressing. If the food sector is to feed the growing global population within planetary boundaries. Open quotes, our reliance on animal-based sources of protein is a major problem as it takes far more resources than plant-based foods to grow and produce and cause more harm to the environment. Total agricultural accounts for about around a quarter of all greenhouse gas emissions, of which approximately 60% is due to animal agriculture. Close, sorry. The answer continues, uh, by 2050, the world population is predicted to increase to 9 billion people whom we must nourish on a planet of finite, finite resources. We need to transform our global food system to meet our needs as a growing population and everyone needs to play a part in making the food system more sustainable. Small actions over time create large scale change, close quotes. NAR is, open quotes, well placed to contribute, close quotes, to innovation in the plant-based space thanks to its, open quotes, history and expertise in sustainability, close quotes, she continued, open quotes, sustainability sourced vegetables and herbs have been used in KNAR products for the past 10 years, currently 95% of all vegetables and herbs in KNAR products are sourced sustainably. NOAA has an ambition to use its scale reaching 2.8 billion people per year to champion better ways to cook and eat for better health and a better planet. Close quotes. But Redmond said NOAA 
can't go it alone. Open quotes. A collaborative approach is necessary as we all work, as we all to work together toward the shared vision for a sustainable global food system. No single organisation can do this alone. Close quote. She stressed to transform our global food system to meet our needs as a growing population. Everyone needs to play a part, and we know that even small actions over time create large scale change. Close quotes. So that's the article for that. Um, so, yeah, keywords, sustainability. Um, they're attacking the, um, you know, meat industry. Uh, they're, they're trying to get um, people on a plant-based diet. We not doesn't men- didn't mention genetically modified uh, foods, but um, if you just got to look at um, what corn is made out of. Um, and... I prefer mince over corn. Um, The thing is, the body, um, the body needs amino acids, and meat and eggs um, provide these essential amino acids. If if people are largely on a plant based diet, there might be, you know, there may be more deficiencies of those amino acids, the essential amino acids that that we need that, that are not always obtainable through beans and um, you know these vegetarian meat vegetarian meat look and look alike products um, so yeah they're um, trying to, to play God um, using you know nice expressions like you know we need to do all this together just like the coronavirus restrictions and you know, getting vaccinated to protect people and everything. It's just a careful, very careful psychology. Um, So that was just an article um, that I found on that. Um, So if you notice what this world teaches, um, and God God tells us to give thanks for every creature that he's given, um, and that God told people to go forth and multiply, why is this world teaching the opposite and trying to play God by saving the planet? Um, so these globalists who have no fear of God uh, will have a rude awakening up during that time of the seven year tribulation when God will pour out one of his judgments upon unbelievers, an unbelieving world, and it will be the sun scorching the men by fire. Now we don't see that today, do we? Um, you know, the sun is used to grow um, trees, you know, and plants and vegetables and fruit. Um, it's at a perfect proportion away from us so that we're not scorched by fire. Um, and, you know, the summertime is, is a time when, you know, we can get, um, you know, it's, it's a lovely time where, you know, we can catch sun on our skin. Um, so yeah, even even people, you know, even people have been turned against the sun. You know that um, it's um, anyway. I won't get into that now, but you know, fear of the sun. Um, so yeah, there will be a judgment in there during the seven year tribulation. It's in chapter 16 of Revelation where it says God will scorch men by fire. So this is real global warming. The Green New Deal, climate change, global warming or whatever names they are using today to save the planet, quote unquote, is just to charge people to get money out of them, which they say is going towards these goals to save the planet. But these people are liars. And they have the spirit of the devil behind their decisions because he is the father of lies. See, these people with money, they just want more money. They don't care about people. They don't care about sharing their wealth, you know, to to build a better planet. Um, Because because they've got wicked hearts, you know, they're they're, they're sin. And um, it's rebellion, you know, they actually think that they are gods. And they just believe the lie of of the enemy, of of the devil, because, um, you know, he he told Adam and Eve, and you shall be as gods. But, well, no, we're not gods. 
I know we cannot escape these carbon tax laws as they place them upon everybody through gas charges, petrol, plastic bags, etc. But God calls them hypocrites. They might think that they can win against God, but they are deceived persons just like Satan is a, de a defeated foe. God is real, God is long-suffering and wants no person to perish. God loves, loves everyone and he would rather die than to live without you. Because of the inherited sin nature that is upon all of mankind, we cannot be reconciled to God through reforming our life, turning from sin or doing good works, being baptised, giving money or saving the planet or curing cancer etc. We need to be as perfect as God to go to heaven as God's nature is holy and we have all fallen short of his glory. Romans 3.23 The wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23 Which means that all of us have earned death and hell. But God in his love towards us sent a saviour. God himself came in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He bore our sin on the cross, he was buried, and three days later victoriously rose from the dead, proving that he was a satisfactory payment for sin forever. All of the Old Testament saints made sin offerings. Oh, well, the priests in the Old Testament um, had to make um, offerings for sin. Um, you know, most were uh, lambs. So these were temporary sin offerings. Um, but the blood of Jesus as a sinless lamb of God took away sin forever. And he did this one time for the sins of mankind. Hebrews 10, 12. Whosoever believeth on him, Jesus promised has it has everlasting life eternal life does not come by feelings or emotions but faith faith is something that we can't see but when it's when the news is is told to us we we receive it by faith we put our faith in that um so god's telling us to have faith in his word um you know the word of god is jesus uh, 1 john 14 Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Saviour, who died in your place, and you can know with 100% assurance that you have everlasting life. So this life is temporary. We can never know when we will die. It is not ourselves who is keeping us alive, but by the mercy of God we are alive today. The emergency of this day is salvation. Are you a child of God, or do you reject the gift of God? All religions of the world are saying that you have to do good works to get to God. When Jesus says it is finished, paid in full. The simplicity of the gospel is in the completed, finished work of Jesus Christ by his death, burial and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Salvation cannot be earned by good works as there is nothing good inside of ourselves. Isaiah 64, 6 says that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. They are filthy before a holy God because we have the inherited sin nature. Will you let Jesus cleanse you of all sin and rebirth you into the family of God where there is the promise of eternal life? And because there's a lot of uh, teachers today that are teaching. In addition to the work of uh, the finished work of Jesus Christ, the teaching that if you don't live, um, a certain way if you don't commit your life to Jesus that you're not saved um, but it's Jesus that saves us it's not us that saves ourselves we we cannot earn salvation um, but anyway thanks very much for listening um, and have a great evening god bless